Yo, JD here, Tyrell Lewis, and as you can see, this is going to be a little bit of a different video, but a video I feel will be incredibly useful to so many people, and I felt this would probably be a very, very good time since F1 2019 has come to a close. F1 2020 is just around the corner, like it's only like a couple weeks or something till it comes out, and I know well, I know for a fact, because this is probably the most common question I get asked is, what would you recommend a wheel? What wheel would you recommend for someone to get into the Formula 1 games? And this video today is going to be mainly focused on the Formula 1 games, not really any sim-like games like R-Factor, iRacing, Assetto Corsa, things like that. This is just going to be from my F1 experience after playing these games for almost 10 years now. Well, it will be 10 years when 2020 comes out. Having been a controller player, uh, but we're not going to talk about the control, we're going to focus on people who only just want to get a wheel and do it on a budget and just get to the highest level possible. Basically the best value for money wheel that you could get uh, for PC, Xbox and PS4 is what we're going to talk about today. So yeah, nothing about the controller, focusing purely on the Formula 1 games and we are literally just going to go straight into it because... I know how daunting and how intimidating it is for someone who has no idea what to buy because equipment such as this, although it's on a budget, it's still a lot of money uh, to do because sim racing and just buying wheel and equipment that we do for racing, the bad thing about it is that it is quite expensive. So like I was trying to get my PC before, it's really overwhelming at times where you don't know what parts to get because you're spending hundreds of pounds or just a lot of money. Uh, it's a big investment and it could be very, very scary for some people. So I really wanted to create this video, especially before the launch of a new game to really help some people out. So if you did find this video very, very useful, please give it a thumbs up, let me know. Let me know if you want me to do future ones about the more high-end wheels and everything as well. But today we are just gonna purely focus on the best value for money um, and that is it. So. I've got some experience. I've got the fan tech. You can probably see the base I've got down there. I've used wheels from the very cheap. Uh, I used to have a wheel which was just no force feedback and completely wireless. I used to have that, which was a bit of a joke to using wheels uh, in F1 simulators like SimCube and the actual professional ones as well. So I've gone from the very top or from the very bottom to the very top. Uh, so I feel I have quite a good idea uh, what I feel is extremely good value. So first of all, we are going to go into the wheel that I think is best value for people who want to play on Xbox and PC at the same time. And I think, you can see here now, the wheel that you 100% need to get if we go to the right page where it can actually do it but we're looking at it right here. It is a TMX Pro, which works on the PC and the Xbox One. And I just feel Thrustmaster are just hands down probably the best value for money will um, company that you can go for. And again, I'm not associated with Thrustmaster or Fanatec, although they've sent me things in the past, I'm not partnered with them. This is a completely unbiased opinion. I've got a Fanatec right here. I've got a Thrustmaster on right now. I think absolutely 1 million percent that they are the ones to go to for an entry level wheel. And when I say entry level, this wheel, I've used this wheel myself, I used to have it. And I know a lot of people who do have it currently right now. You can reach esports level with this wheel 100%. And we'll look at the price, what it actually is as well. You can see here, TMX Pro, £199. It's currently out of stock, obviously because of the virus and everything like that. But for less than £200, you could get a wheel that could take you to esports, literally. This is all you ever need. And playing on this wheel, compared to, I've got the TSXW, and the thing a lot of people make a mistake on, they'll see a price and they'll think more is better, and they'll just see the more expensive it is, surely the better it is, which in a way is true to a degree, but I feel sometimes the price is high, it just gives you a better experience, but I've always said this, I think you can get used to anything 
I think you can get used to anything and this wheel here offers such a good experience. It gives you such good force feedback. It gives you 900 degrees of rotation. All the buttons are so logically placed and just really easy to access. You know, with these buttons here, with F1, like this wheel here, I absolutely love, but you've got all these dials. Now it feels like you're driving a, in a, like a fighter pilot or something like that. You know, it's great. And, but most of these buttons only really work on PC and just other sim racing games and stuff as well. They're a little bit meaningless in F1. You know, you don't really need to have too many buttons and to what you need, especially on the new game where it's gonna be, the ERS is gonna be pretty much almost automated now. You know, you've got the DRS button, the pit lane, you know, you've got the D-pad there as well. And the best thing about this as well, you get some pedals with it, which a lot of other wheel companies don't actually do. And these pedals, I've these are the pedals I actually use. I've had these pedals for three or four years. I think Thrustmaster, they just make really, really good quality. It's just plug in and play, literally just plug in and play. And I can't fault it at all. I think the reliability is pretty good. You even get a brake a conical mod that you can put into the pedals itself. And because they offer still decent resistance, even if you don't put that in, but if you want a, a bit more resistance, which I know some people like, you can add that as well. That comes with it completely. And yeah, I just love the simplicity of it. Although it's a round wheel, you can even change it um, to the Thrustmaster open wheel that I have got. Uh, where you can literally just buy it completely separately for like 113 pounds i got mine for and you can add that to it you can just add it to the ecosystem and yeah i think the force feedback effects you get from this compared to the one that i've got which is about 200 pounds more than this or 300 pounds more than this it's very very minimal in distance yes i might get a little bit more better detail from my one but honestly i couldn't recommend this anymore this is the perfect wheel if you're going on xbox or pc it's absolutely brilliant uh, the pedals really good quality the rigidness the stiffness of it i can't fault it it's very just simple i think this is the best value wheel that you can get honestly uh, for 200 pounds less than 200 pounds and you get this it is really really good however if you are on ps4 we're just gonna jump into that now Thrustmaster do do uh, PS4 wheels, but I don't think they are as good as this one for the PS4. And I have to say, if I had a choice between Thrustmaster and uh, Logitech, then I would choose Thrustmaster. I think they're just normally just much better quality, just a much better feeling in the force feedback, the simplicity of it as well. Uh, I think the pedals are especially a lot better. Like this one here, it's good that you get the LED uh, display. Hopefully my webcam's not blocking this. Um, again, the, the buttons are logically laid out. And you can see this is a little bit more expensive, about 250 pounds is what I typically see it go for. But again, you can get, you can find, you can look around, you can probably get it cheap in this. You could probably get it close to 200 pounds as well. But yeah, this wheel has got a good force feedback. I wouldn't say it gives you as much strength in the force feedback as a Thrustmaster does. It's a little bit light, I would say even on max settings. But as a beginner and entry level, I've seen so many people compete at the very top leagues with this wheel on PS4 and on PC. The likes of Yoni Tomala comes to mind. He used to use this. I know Daniel Berezne used to use something like this with these pedals. I think that is probably just equally as good value. But the main thing I have an issue with is many just the, qual the overall quality and just the brakes are probably not as good as a Thrustmaster. But if you want to play on PS4 and PC, I would say this is absolutely the one to go for. They do have an expert uh, Xbox version of this. Um, it's called the G20 Logitech wheel. Uh, but I'm not a big fan of that. For some reason, there's no LED on it, which, you know, it's not a deal breaker or anything. But the brakes, the pedals are just a bit... They actually, like, they feel harder than the load cell for some reason. A bit unrealistically hard. Um... I'm not quite sure what that is. I think we can switch over it to it right now, which we can. Yeah, it's a G920. Um, same price, just a little bit different. But yeah, I would say for Xbox and PC, 100% go with the TMX Pro. 
with that wheel, I think you cannot go wrong with it. I know so many people will have it. I've had it in the past myself. I only didn't keep it because I got given this other wheel. Um, but I know so many people who use it. The quality is amazing. The force feedback, the effects you get from it. Just a plug in and play, just a, such a simple, simple device. It really, really is. And you know, you have the likes of Fanatec, which a lot of people will go be sucked into now because it's so high in advertising, it's sponsored in F1 Esports and everything as well. You know, and I have Fanatec, and Fanatec are very good wheels. They are really, really good wheels. But if you look at them, if you go into the base here, you can see, you know. This is the base I've got. I've got the CSL Elite uh, official license PS4 base. Now it starts off at 400 euros, which altogether, that's more than the wheel and the pedals that you get with the Thrustmaster. But the good thing about this is of course, it works on all platforms, which is great, but not everyone really is gonna be playing on all platforms. But the problem with this is that you're gonna to have to add the steering wheel in that if we go to the lowest price of the steering wheel, Lowest price is still 179 pounds or 179 euros. Ideally, you want to go for this one, which is the one I've got right here. That works on all platforms. Um, unfortunately, this one doesn't work on all platforms because that'd be really good if it did. But you know, you're going to be spending a over well over 300, maybe 400 more, and that's before you even get the pedals. And the pedals, again, I've said this many, many times. I don't think you need a load cell pedal, which is why I think. The T3PA add-on, which you get with the Thrustmaster, is very, very good because it still offers decent resistance. You know, you don't need it for Formula 1 games. So if I'm being brutally honest, for a sim game, where it's longer braking distances, there's more detailing through the track that comes through the device, then yes, definitely. Um, you would probably need a load cell just to get that real, real accuracy, and that's that last percent of accuracy that you really go need if you're really pushing the absolute maximum of the game and the limits of the car and everything, then yes, it can make a difference. And perhaps even at eSports, if you reach eSports level, since they use it, then yeah, then you'll probably need to use it then. But I know so many people who use just the elite pedals, people like Carl Mitchell, uh, Speed Bari, funnily enough, he used these pedals and you see how fast he is. There's so many guys I know who use just this, and I've used it myself, who are just absolutely rapid. These provide a really good resistance and consistency, but then an extra 99 euros. And if you add that to the total, now if we add this to the car, and we'll keep going back, continue shopping, and go to the racing wheels, uh, go to that base. Let's add this to the shopping cart as well. No, see, almost 499 euros straight away. And let's go for let's go with the cheapest steering wheel. Um, trying to make it as fair as possible. No, say if you went with this one, this is a round steering wheel as well. So let's add that. So that's 679.85 euros. And let's put that in a calculator. You're probably not gonna see it on my screen um, because I'm probably blocking it. But that is 614 pounds quite a lot no it's well over 300 pounds in difference but if that is within your budget then i would probably say maybe go for that to be honest because it's going to give you better detailing the best thing about thrustmaster it just gives you much more options much more accessibility customizability you know it gives you more variables to play with and yeah it will give you a more immersive detailed feeling through your hands and everything it it will do that 100 percent but i would honestly say thrustmaster are probably more reliable it won't give you as um good feeling in the full in the force feedback it won't have that me mechanism if i can even say it mechanism mechanicism whatever you know what i'm trying to say it won't have as much detail but for the formula one games i don't think you need that you really don't need that. And this is about starting on the budget. You're going to be saving well over 300 pounds going with a Thrustmaster for the PC and Xbox and even the Logitech as well. I think those are definitely the two main wheels that you want to go for. And that is basically just wanted what I wanted to show today because so many people ask me, what do you think, what wheel you should get? And I honestly think for both platforms, it should be this. No, no question then. You know, there is the TX Leather Edition, which a lot of people talk about. And I know 
Um, that is good, um, definitely really, really good as well. If we look into that on Amazon, let's see how much that is. You can see the prices really do uh, differ quite a bit. You know, that's 685 pounds. Now you get the same pedals and it pretty much is just a leather version of it, really. You know, that's really it. It's not a huge, huge difference. But with the uh, TMX Pro, I just feel it's just perfect. It's just a realistic size. It's not too big, not too small. Everything is easily accessible. You get amazing feedback from it. Plug in and play. You don't have to just do the in-game wheel settings like you would do with a Fantech. It's just so less intimidating, I think, in my opinion. And I think it's just absolutely perfect. A wheel under £200 where you could go to F1 Esports. What else do you need? And if you want to throw a cockpit on that, you've got the money, extra money for a cockpit as well. So that is my thoughts on it today. I hope you found that useful. Just try to get to the point as quick as I could. That is just my recommendations. Let me know what you think, and I'll catch you soon. Peace.